We're joined right now on RailerCulture.com by Stephen James. Stephen is with Frito-Lay, and he's based uh, in Toronto. Welcome today, Stephen. Thank you, Sean. Steve, Stephen, what do you, what's your role at uh, Frito-Lay? Good. My team uh, looks after everything on the procurement side for the Frito-Lay business unit and the Quaker business unit inside of PepsiCo Foods Canada. So that's sort of all the ingredients uh, that go into, into those brands and those products. Uh, you know, all the way through energy and a couple other categories. So, so recently, Frito Lay has uh, is is procuring has made the decision to start procuring omega uh, nine oil uh, for for use in its food products. Uh, how long ago did you make that decision? A uh, great decision was made. Uh, it it started probably about uh, three years ago. The first conversation. So, uh, it's not. It's not a decision that we take lightly when we change a major ingredient like that. So three years ago, we started work with with Dow, uh, talking about what this opportunity could look like, the characteristics of the oil, and all the logistics that would take to get it put in place. And and the Canadian market was the lead market for for Frito-Lay. And we converted uh, Lay's and Ruffles and some of our kettle brands over to the next era canola or the omega-9 oil in Q1 of 2010. And so it took us, uh, you know, the better part of a year and a half to put in place all the groundwork and complete the consumer testing to get that done. And we came on in Q1 of 2012 with a number of our corn-based snacks as well where we're using, uh, where we're using omega-9 in those formulations. One thing I've always wondered is that uh, the the Nexera or the Omega Nine program, you know, we have a healthier oil. Obviously, people are a lot more concerned about their health. Uh, the Omega Nine provides a you know a healthy option uh, as an ing- for ingredient companies. What what it just at a hundred thousand feet, it looks like it's such a simple transition. What makes this such a like you said? It's not a decision you take lightly. What what makes it so difficult to to move quicker? People love their brand. So people love yellow bag lays, and they really don't want you to do anything that would take away from their experience with the brand, as an example. And you could say the same thing about Doritos or Tostitos, but people are intimate uh, with, with those brands and how they use and enjoy them. So anytime we have a, a change that potentially uh, would, would put that experience at risk, we go to the end of the earth to test that, to make sure that at the very least we're neutral in the eyes and the taste buds of the consumer and if at all you want to improve the experience. So it's uh, it's just a missed step that you never want to have where, you, where you've done something to disappoint someone that's got an intimate relationship with your brands. Well, I guess, I guess you know what I think of immediately is when I think it was Coke that came out with their new formulation of Coke, and that was a disaster because people didn't like new Coke; they wanted old Coke. That's the Coke they loved. And is it? I guess it sounds like similar sort of situation. That's uh, that's a great historical analogy. Um, when uh, when we do anything on these brands, uh, we're always trying to do it in the spirit of of enhancement, if you will, and. Uh, people are, are so close to them, what we may initially think is an enhancement uh, comes across as a change. Uh, so we go and do uh, a lot of consumer testing. Uh, we'll do a number of different iterations on those tests. We'll have, uh, we'll have tests where people are at home, you know, using the brand and giving us feedback around that, how that's uh, changed their experience, uh, better, worse, uh, across a number of attributes. So it's something we take very seriously. So if we look at uh, the yellow bag Lay's potato chips and, and we compare uh, the former oil profile that you were using and what you're using now, what are some of the health differences? Like what, what are some of the benefits to consumers? Yeah, do you know what the, the comparison between the two oils on the nutritional panel is very close. So uh, while the nutritionals are important, I'll tell you that taste is king at the end of the day. So the focus of our consumer testing um, really is around taste 
and you need to make it as good as it was or better. And on the nutritional side, you know, PepsiCo had a chance to lead uh, a lot of work around removal of trans fats from the from the snacking, and did that a you know a long time ago. Uh, so we certainly would never want to go backwards on the nutritional panel. But head to head, if you looked at the nutritional panel from what we had two years ago and what we have now, it would be very similar. Um, I think the advantages that I see in the in being able to make the move over to using Nextera canola in the supply chain uh, really comes down to the, the fact that the canola industry is as big as it is. It's growing. Uh, the processing assets are coming online. So availability and, and strength of supply is a, is a very big attribute for us. As a Canadian, I love the fact that we have an opportunity to source Canadian ingredients for our products. You know, the potatoes come from Canada, the oil coming from Canada, you know, is a great uh, is a great story. And more and more, we're seeing consumers wanting to know where their, you know, where their food's coming from. So it was, uh, it really was a, a win for us to be able to make this move. But the nutritional panel is is close to the same. Cool. Okay, Stephen, thank you very much. I agree that this is a, a very, very good uh, Canadian uh, story from uh, from a farmer's vantage point, from a consumer's vantage point. I think it's uh, I'm, 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 uh, I think it's a extremely exciting and some of the potential that's out there for programs like this. So I thank you very much for joining us today. John, thank you. Thanks.